Is it possible to get too much oxygen? Is too much of a good thing not a good thing? And if that is true, how do you know where the line is? Is there a way to calculate the dose of oxygen to know that you're keeping your patients safe? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the dosage of oxygen. And there's two reasons to have a conversation around dosage. The first is, are they getting an effective dose that's ultimately gonna lead them to the benefits that they're looking for? And are they getting a safe dose that we know with confidence beyond a shadow of a doubt that these patients are nowhere near at risk of pulmonary oxygen toxicity? Oxygen toxicity is a real thing. And we've covered it in previous videos. There's two types of oxygen toxicity, central nervous system oxygen toxicity and pulmonary oxygen toxicity. So if you haven't seen those videos, please take a look and make sure that you have a full grasp and understanding of what oxygen toxicity actually is. Now let's start the conversation with oxygen tolerance units. What is that? An oxygen tolerance unit is literally a measurable dose of oxygen. It's the atmospheric pressure multiplied by the percentage of oxygen somebody's breathing, multiplied by the length of time that they're being exposed inside the chamber. When we're just casually talking about oxygen dose, or I'm trying to explain this to a patient, I might just say to them, oxygen pressure in minutes. But it's literally ATA, so the pressure in atmospheres, absolute ATA, multiplied by the percentage of oxygen that they're breathing, multiplied by the number of minutes that the session was. We could take a look at any protocol, whether it's an on-label protocol or an off-label protocol, and we can literally start breaking these protocols down into oxygen tolerance units or oxygen pressure in minutes and start to understand what was the cumulative exposure of oxygen that this patient received over a period of time. Now, that's not the end-all be-all in terms of dosage. We know that the amount of pressure in some cases does matter. The percentage of oxygen that a patient is breathing might matter. Certainly, the frequency time is one of the most impactful components of hyperbaric oxygen. And so we can't just apply this concept across the full spectrum of treatment that we might offer a patient, but it certainly gives us a foundation of understanding of how much oxygen a patient received. So if a patient was at two atmospheres on 100% oxygen for 60 minutes, that would be two ATA times 100% or one. So two times one times 60. So that would be 120 oxygen tolerance units. That's how we calculate it. Why is this important and why do you care? We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. Why is this important and why do you care? Well, to some extent, maybe you're treating somebody at 2.2, where they treated them at 2.0, or you're treating them at 1.5, where they treated them at 2.0. Maybe you're breathing 100% oxygen or 96% oxygen. So what we could start to do is we could start to manipulate those three variables, oxygen, pressure, and minutes, and we can start designing protocols that are similar, even with slight differences in one or two of those variables. Are you guaranteed to get the exact same results when you start manipulating those variables? No. But should you get pretty close? In most cases, I would say yes. And so when designing a protocol or a program of care for a patient or a client, Understanding those variables and understanding how to add more time or add more visits or a higher percentage of oxygen where lower pressure might be used or understanding where the frequency and duration of a protocol might be less where more pressure and more oxygen is being used can help you create these consistent protocols and get much more similar results. On the other hand, how do we keep our patients safe? And how do we make sure that the dosage of oxygen that we're now calculating is well within the tolerance of that patient so that we're not at risk for something like pulmonary oxygen toxicity? Well, you know the equation. It's ATA times the percent of oxygen times the number of minutes. So what is the typical tolerance of an average patient? Well, in order to get full-blown oxygen toxicity, that would be 1,440 units in a day. How did we get that number? Well, that would be breathing at one ATA, which is normal atmospheric pressure where you and I are right now. So one ATA breathing 100% oxygen. So one times one 
times how many minutes are there in a day? 1,440. So one ATA times 100% oxygen times 24 hours or 1,440 minutes is 1,440 units. So that's full-blown oxygen toxicity. That's why when you see a patient with COPD or heart and lung issues and they're on oxygen 24 hours a day, they're not getting 100% oxygen through a mask 100% of the time. They're getting like two to four liters of oxygen through a cannula to make sure that we're not putting them at further risk of further pulmonary, or in other words, further lung damage. In a hyperbaric chamber, they're getting 100% oxygen and they're getting it at a multiplying effect because we're increasing the pressure. And so again, time becomes the biggest factor. Now, I did an example before, two atmospheres at 100% oxygen for an hour, that was 120 units. I'm telling you that 1,440 is full-blown oxygen toxicity. Well, 825 would reduce vital capacity by about 4%. And so in general, in most of our hyperbarics, we're trying not to exceed 325 units in a 24-hour period. There are cases where we're doing two atmospheres on 100% oxygen for two hours. So what would that be? That would be 240 units. Is that still safe? Yes. What about two and a half atmospheres for 90 minutes? Is that still safe? What about in some cases, you might even be doing double or triple sessions in a day. Are you keeping your patient safe? You now know how to calculate that. So take the atmospheres, multiply it by the percentage of oxygen that they're breathing, multiply it by the minutes, and then multiply it by the number of sessions that you've done. Understanding this concept will guarantee that you're keeping your patients miles away from pulmonary oxygen toxicity, while at the same time, developing a meaningful plan that you can put together for them to make sure that you're getting the effect and the benefit that you're trying to reach with them. So I hope this helps you understand OPM, oxygen, pressure, and minutes, and understand how to create safe and effective protocols for your patients. We'll see you on the next video. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.